These days, learning to code has never been more accessible. Aside from the free courses online and YouTube tutorials, you've also got a personal tutor in the form of AI at your fingertips. I've been making videos on this topic for several years now, as well as worked as an instructor at a coding bootcamp. Every day, I get tons of messages from people excited about starting their journey. But despite all these free resources, I've always wondered, why is it that some of the brightest people don't succeed? I've come to the realization that most people fail because of issues with their learning strategy and mindset. So in this video, I'm gonna go over several common mistakes you might be making while learning to code that's holding you back. I've personally failed to learn certain programming concepts multiple times and struggled with a lot of programming classes. If I knew this a decade ago when I started learning to code, it would have saved me so much time and frustration. The good news is that once you spot them, you're gonna be on your way to making real progress again. The first mistake is not having a solid plan or timeline. If you can't commit to consistency over a long period of time, just don't even start. How many times have we gotten super excited about learning something new only for the honeymoon period to end and we're left with nothing to sustain the effort over the long term? A goal without a deadline or a plan is really nothing but a dream. This is one of the reasons why online courses have such a dismal completion rate compared to in-person classes in college. With in-person classes, there are strict deadlines, accountability from your peers and consequences. Free online courses, on the other hand, you can kind of do them at your own pace and on your own schedule. While that sounds great in theory, the reality is that we don't have the stakes to keep us accountable or the support system for motivation. One way to combat this is to use a commitment device. This basically means finding a way to increase the pain of not meeting your goal. After I graduated, I knew I needed to prepare for technical interviews, but I kind of just spent weeks studying casually, reading a chapter from cracking the coding interview every once in a while. At that rate, I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere, so to light a fire under my butt, I scheduled an interview with a tech company three months away. I knew they were going to ask some difficult algorithm and data structures questions, and I was motivated by the fear of bombing the interview and looking like an idiot. To be honest, I didn't get that particular job, but I got way more done than I would have otherwise, which helped me land a different job down the road. At the very least, you need to commit to a certain amount of time every day over a long period of time and not simply let life get in the way. The next thing that makes a lot of people quit is having a fixed mindset. In my first programming class, which was object-oriented programming with Java, the instructor asked a question about passing by value or passing by reference. It completely went over my head. The girl who sat next to me also had, according to her, no programming experience, but she confidently gave the right answer and it completely blew my mind. It's so hard to see other people pick up concepts faster than you with seemingly half the effort. I know because I've been there. It's like consistently going to the gym and hitting all of your macros, but someone who binge drinks on the weekend and eats like a human carburetor still looks better than you. It makes you wonder how in the world you're gonna compete with people like that. A lot of us have been conditioned growing up to believe that it's innate talent that dictates what we can do. One of my mentors once said, if you need to build confidence, gather evidence. And I found that to be true over time. Even if you don't fully believe you're going to be able to master programming, take it day by day and push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit more each time until you've gathered evidence that yes, you are the type of person that can learn difficult things. I don't want to sound like too much of a life coach, but from my observation, most people who quit are held back by mindset rather than lack of talent or luck. By the way, check out the best-selling book, Mindset, by a psychologist named Carol Dweck. I'm sure most of you have heard of this book, but if you haven't, I highly suggest you check it out because it's a fascinating read on the growth mindset, and I think it's going to open your eyes as to how much you're able to grow and change and improve. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I should go read it again. The next mistake that I see a lot of people doing now is copying and pasting without understanding. This post, for example, is one of so many I've come across where a student talks about getting hooked on AI and being unable to get clean. I'm a third year in CS and I have a confession. So far this semester, for all of my coding assignments, I've used AI. Although I can understand what the AI is giving me, I can never come up with the code on my own. It's been killing me because I feel like if I quit, I won't be able to do the assignments, but if I continue, what skill will I have? Relying on AI as a crutch is a short-term fix, but as with any other shortcuts, you're guaranteed to pay a heavy price for it in the future. Using it to explain a certain piece of code or asking AI for additional examples is one thing, but copying and pasting without understanding is a guaranteed waste of time if you're trying to learn. Not to mention, it feels hollow. 
I don't know about you, but I find a lot of satisfaction in being able to solve a problem on my own or building something from scratch. Trust me when I say this, but being competent at something makes it far more enjoyable. Copying and pasting, whether it's from Stack Overflow or AI, defeats the purpose if you're trying to learn. I did a video on this recently, but it seems like there is an epidemic of new computer science graduates who have vibe coded their way through their degree. The fact that so many people are taking this kind of shortcut presents an opportunity to stand out just by virtue of doing the slightly harder thing and actually understanding what you're coding. Programmers who can't do anything without AI are going to be easy to beat. As with most worthwhile things in life, the shortcut is really just doing the hard work that you're avoiding. So how do you use AI to help you rather than hinder you? I've partnered with HubSpot to bring you a free comprehensive guide on learning to code with ChatGPT efficiently, which they made with Google data scientist and YouTuber Sundas Khalid. Whether you're just getting started or you're an experienced developer looking to sharpen your workflow, this guide will set you on the right path to coding with the help of AI. It provides you with useful prompt templates and examples to help you get the most out of AI assistance, how to debug your code with AI, and the most important part, limitations and cautions you should take when using AI to learn to code. For those new to coding, it's going to introduce you to all the ways coding can be applied to the real world and how to pick a programming language. It also goes into depth about how to use AI so you don't depend on it as a crutch. In a world where so many people are blindly copying and pasting code, the way to stand out is by taking the time to master the fundamentals and using AI to accelerate that process. This guide is packed with actual value and I recommend downloading it now for free by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you so much HubSpot for sponsoring this video and making this resource available. The next mistake is not stepping away from a problem when you get stuck. Tell me if this is you. You stumble upon a bug or coding challenge that should be easy for you to solve on any given day. But then half an hour goes by and for some reason you still can't solve it and now your ego's on the line. You start to get frustrated and that makes it even harder to think clearly, but you also don't want to admit defeat and leave the problem even temporarily. I've been through this experience countless times, especially with leak code problems. In the best-selling book, A Mind for Numbers, the author describes two modes of thinking focus mode and diffuse mode. There's a lot of neuroscience supporting the fact that both of these modes are critical for problem solving. Focus mode, as the name implies, is when you're deeply concentrated on solving a problem using your usual logical approach. When given a problem, we all initially start off in the focus mode. You're zeroed in and thinking only about this problem. Diffuse mode, on the other hand, happens when you relax your attention and just let your mind wander. It's a lesser known approach, and to a lot of people, it kind of just feels like procrastination. But trust me, this is supported by science and it's highly effective. Diffuse mode gives you room to gain new insight rather than continue getting stuck trying to solve the problem the old way. This is why every single one of us have had the experience of coming up with insights and ideas for solutions to a code problem while going out on a walk or in the shower. It's because we're able to see the bigger picture and look at the problem from a different angle. So if you've been laser focused on a bug and you can't seem to see the problem from a different angle, try taking a step away, listen to some music and come back to after a while. The next thing that makes a lot of people quit is taking errors and failures personally. They see errors as setbacks or a sign that they aren't good at coding, which couldn't be further from the truth. As obvious as this sounds, running into errors or failing unit tests is not a personal indictment on your ability. Coding is like 80% debugging, so learning not to be phased by errors and how to actually use your debugger is incredibly valuable. The feeling that you don't quite know exactly what you're doing and the anxiety that comes from all of this uncertainty never really goes away, but just take comfort in the fact that everyone, even senior and staff engineers, feel this way from time to time. It's totally normal and honestly, it's a good thing because it means that you're learning something and you're growing. The other mistake that a lot of beginners make is focusing too much on the outcome and not the process. The one thing that makes learning to code so frustrating is that progress is often not linear and unpredictable. It's kind of like an ice cube melting. Imagine an ice cube. You leave it in a room that's negative 10 degrees Celsius and you raise the temperature degree by degree, but it seems like nothing happens. 
the ice cube stays frozen. It's only after you get to a tipping point does the ice cube start to melt. And it's kind of the same thing with learning to code. You could spend week after week learning, but still feel like you can't build anything and you haven't made much progress. But it's only after the tipping point does everything finally click. You simply need the patience to keep pushing even if the progress isn't visible. And one way to do that is focus more on your actions and your process not just on the outcome. I know a lot of people say you should be measuring productivity by what you actually accomplish, not the time you spent, but sometimes it's actually the opposite. As we all know with programming, oftentimes you can't control the output or how long something takes. Some bugs take five minutes, some take five hours. It's very much like sales. There are days where you can make five sales in a few hours and other days where you can make none the entire day despite working just as hard. You can be the best salesperson in the world, but you don't have complete control over whether or not the prospect will purchase. And if you measure a day's productivity only by something you don't have control over, such as sales numbers, then you're gonna put yourself on the fast track to burnout. A far better idea would be instead to commit to a certain amount of input. For example, studying an hour a day in the morning and just trust the process. If you focus on the actions, the results will come. The next big trap that a lot of people fall into is perfectionism. This might sound a little contradictory to everything that you've heard online, but hear me out. In Atomic Habits, James Clear described an experiment whereby a college photography class was split into two groups. One group was going to be graded on the number of photos they took and the other class would be graded on the quality of a single single photo. At the end of the semester, he found out that the best quality photos were all produced from the group that was graded on quantity. The quantity group was out there experimenting, iterating, and learning from their mistakes, whereas the qu quality group kind of just sat there speculating about what it took to take a quality photo. What I've noticed is that a lot of students will kind of just wait around until they've watched all the tutorials and feel ready before they actually try to build something. Aside from the fact that you're probably never going to actually feel ready, coding before you're fully ready will inform you of what the most common problems you're going to come across are and put into context the new knowledge that you're going to gain. Like every other skill in life, you've got to get your reps in. You're never going to find the perfect online program or the perfect time, so you might as well just start. You heard me talk about this before, but one of the biggest traps that people learning to code fall into is being stuck in tutorial hell. I'm not gonna yap about it too much here, but in essence, you need to stop passively watching so many tutorials including YouTube videos like this actually, and get your hands dirty. But if you have some free time later and you wanna hear about the exact roadmap I would use if I wanted to learn to code all over again, then check out this video I recently did on that very topic. Ultimately, learning to code is just like trying to get fit, building a business, or learning any other difficult skill. A lot of the roadblocks that I've mentioned in this video, I realize are the same ones you're gonna come across trying to do any other difficult endeavor. The good news is that by developing the discipline to go through with learning the code, I think you're also making yourself mentally tougher and it will help you with other areas of your life. As always, I wanna hear about your struggles learning to code, so leave a comment below and I will try to get back to you. Happy coding and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.